It is important for you to use good laboratory practices when handling your substrates. Remember, just because you can't see a particle or contaminant does not mean that it will not have an effect on your or other lab members' devices. These practices may seem laborious, but with some practice they will become familiar and will give your substrates the best possible chance of success. The handling of standard 4-inch silicon wafers is included in the video, Wafer Handling Using Tweezers, Vacuum Wands, and Cassettes. This presentation will cover the handling of other wafer types and pieces. This includes 3-5 substrates, sapphire, glass, quartz, thinned or backlapped wafers, and 6-inch squares, as well as wafer pieces. First, verify that your substrate type is compatible with the equipment you plan to use. In our labs, each piece of equipment has a wiki page that documents allowed substrates. If it is not clear if your substrate is allowed, please contact the staff person that manages the equipment, or you may ask the Process and Materials, or PROM, committee. You must have approval by PROM if your substrate is not specifically documented as approved for the equipment before your first run. Please check the wiki for details about how to contact PROM. There are many substrates that require more delicate handling than standard silicon wafers. These fragile wafers can include 3-5 semiconductors such as gallium arsenide, gallium aluminum arsenide, or gallium nitride, sapphire substrates, 6-inch square wafers, and thinned or backlapped silicon wafers. In addition, extreme care must be taken with arsenic-containing wafers, such as gallium arsenide and gallium aluminum arsenide, since arsenic is extremely toxic. Broken wafer pieces must be cleaned up in accordance with safety procedures to prevent exposure to the researcher, the people located nearby, and the maintenance personnel who could all be exposed to these particles. If you are using arsenic-containing wafers, please make sure to prepare for the additional safety concerns. This does not typically include silicon substrates which may be doped with trace amounts of arsenic, but would include gallium arsenide substrates or substrates with gallium arsenide films deposited on them. There are two categories of safety concerns. The first is heating. High temperature processing of gallium arsenide films and substrates can lead to decomposition which can generate toxic byproducts in the form of arsenic and arsenic oxides. Heating should be limited to below 350 degrees C and for very limited amounts of time. Capping layers of silicon nitride or silicon oxide can protect samples for extended heat processing. Be sure to contact the PROM committee before processing in any system where the conditions are not already detailed. The second concern is around handling and disposal. Gallium arsenide is fragile and prone to breakage. When using tweezers, holding samples at a 45 degree angle off the cleavage plane will help reduce breakage. Be sure to carefully remove the wafer from the cassette by gently lifting straight up without scraping or touching the surfaces of the wafer to the cassette. When cleaving the gallium arsenide wafers, place some clean room tissues over the substrate while doing the cleaving to minimize and contain any airborne dust or debris. Do this in an exhausted fume hood or wet bench. When a gallium arsenide substrate or wafer is broken, either deliberately through cleaving or by accident, the debris and fine dust must be contained and disposed of properly. Make sure to consult the lab policies on how to collect, label, and dispose of gallium arsenide waste. When cleaning fragile substrates, such as thinned silicon wafers or pieces, extra care must be taken to ensure the brittle substrate does not break. When rinsing with DI water, make sure to use the Teflon wa wafer holder. Spray or flow the water at an angle and not straight on. The same procedure should be used with a nitrogen gun when drying them. It's best not to do this with tweezers, but if you do, make sure the water hits at a steep angle.
If the water hits straight on, the wafer can easily shatter. Some other non-standard substrates include glass wafers and quartz wafers. Transparent substrates can often look quite similar and care is required in order to ensure that you are using the proper substrate. In particular, it is important to note that glass wafers contain sodium, magnesium, boron, calcium, and sometimes tin. These materials are not allowed in every piece of equipment and can negatively impact certain devices. These do not require any special handling other than being aware that these shatter like silicon and can become safety concerns. Now we will talk about wafer pieces. Wafers may be broken into small pieces before processing. Depending on the equipment to be used with the piece, it may be necessary to use a pocket wafer, or mount the piece to a carrier wafer prior to processing. Some equipment cannot handle wafer pieces under any circumstances. Consult the wiki pages or the process staff for the equipment you will use for recommendations. There are a variety of wafer piece storage containers that are available in the SNF stockroom. These may be purchased through Badger for use in the SNF or XFAB labs. Tweezers should be used to handle wafer pieces. Like wafers, pieces should never be touched with your hands even if you are wearing gloves. There are tweezers for handling wafer pieces available in the stockroom for use in our labs. This concludes the video for handling non-standard substrates and wafer pieces.